This is hard. Very, very hard. It's almost all uphill. Almost. Hey folks, friends, hope uh, everybody had a good New Year's Eve and Happy New Year to everyone. It's early January and today I just want to talk about my next hike. So I am going hiking uh, in a couple of days with my friend uh, James Wally from Wally Walks and it's a winter hike and I know a lot of people don't like winter hiking. Perhaps they're scared of it, or perhaps it's the comfort or the discomfort, or perhaps it's a, perhaps it's a lack of gear. So uh, they're all valid reasons. But you know, my encouragement to people has always been learn to enjoy the winter, especially if you live in Canada. Um, it extends your season. It gets you to practice new skills that, that translate. You know, if, if you're very comfortable hiking in winter, you'll be extremely comfortable hiking in summer and spring. Um, you know, get your and, and I've done videos in the past that show how you can extend your summer gear with some small additions and use it in winter without having necessarily to get purpose-built winter gear i kind of have a mix of both you see it in this video um you know the tent is my summer tent my sleeping bag is a winter sleeping bag clothes can be adapted i still sleep on a mattress and things like that so perhaps the biggest thing you need for winter is either uh, snowshoes or skis but um, this uh, beyond that one of the really big advantages of winter for me is the fact that you get to go places that are super crowded in summer but that you can have to yourself in winter and this hike that I'm doing uh, in the coming days is a prime example of that so Wally and I are going to Lake O'Hara and Lake O'Hara is one of the most premier destinations in the Canadian Rockies. You know, it's a it's a lake comparable in scenery to um, to Mal to Maline or to um, uh, Lake Louise or to Moraine Lake. Absolutely comparable. But the big difference is that uh, over the years, uh, it became so popular that they closed it off to basically vehicle traffic. So the only way to get to that lake now and the circuit of trails so once you're at the lake it's in a bowl of mountains and there's a circuit of trails all around there but the only way to get to that lake is in the summertime is by winning the lottery and and getting a reservation and last year or the year before when the reservation system opened uh, a thousand sites throughout or a thousand tent pads you know 16 a day kind of thing the entire season of 10 pads at lake o'hara were reserved within a half an hour so it's a lottery and um and and even if you win the lottery if you don't win the lottery in the summer and you want to go visit it you can walk 11 kilometers to lake o'hara but you won't be able to camp because you won't have a spot and then you'll see the lake and then if you're strong you'll walk back out and that's you know 22 kilometers if you want to do some of the hikes around the lake, you have to be extremely strong because you have to hike in the 11 kilometers, do one of the mountain hikes, and then hike back out. So you're looking at a 30 kilometer day in the summer. So uh, unless you get on your mountain bike or do things like that. But in the winter, there's nobody there. So um, we don't, we, we made reservations just today and we have our reservations. And so we're going to walk the 11 kilometers to Lake O'Hara. There's only one campground at Lake O'Hara. So people that go to Lake O'Hara in the summer usually reserve it for three days. They walk the 11 kilometers, they base camp at the lake, and then each day they do one of the hikes around there. And so if you wanted to do all the beautiful hikes around Lake O'Hara, you would have to be lucky enough to get a reservation, you know, three or four times kind of thing. So it's very difficult. But we're going in winter, bit of an avalanche risk, but we're going to do the 11 kilometers. We're going to base camp at the lake. We're going to explore the cabins around there and, and things like that. We probably won't go do an alpine hike, uh, but we'll at least get to go to Lake O'Hara and camp there and not be in a rush to come back so quick introduction that's what um, that's what I'm doing next week and um, hopefully you enjoy that video and um, as part of this video I'll also put a little bit more focus than usual on the preparation for uh, a winter hike
All right. I still got gear on the floor from last year. You've seen this room before. I got sleeping bags hanging up there. I got all sorts of gear on my shelf there. All sorts of gear. So what I'm going to do now is get ready for winter. So the most, the number one thing, so this is an ultralight backpack. This is the Outdoor Vitals Shadow Light 60. It's an awesome backpack, but it's 60 liters. And for winter, I prefer a bigger pack because the gear is bulkier. And then when I get lazy or if my hands are cold, I can just stuff everything into the bigger pack. Whereas these packs kind of always require some finesse when packing. So I have lots of choices, uh, but I don't care. I'm going to my trusted uh, Arcteryx Bora, even though it's a heavy pack at, you know, six pounds and uh, it's super big. I am taking this pack and that's it. I'm not, I'm not messing around in winter. I got to bring too much gear and I'm going on a three day trip this weekend or this week and it's already in the minus 20 range. So it's very cold outside. So this is my pack and this one can go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly go through the summer gear and replace it with winter and throw everything on the ground and then I'll organize better later. I kind of have a mental note of what I need. I'm going to need snowshoes. So I'm going to bring my snowshoes and uh, usually I always repack everything the way it was, but I have kids, I have a wife, I have other people. And so there's always a possibility that something's damaged or not correct. And you guys heard my story with MSR, disappointed, but so these shoes are fine. They're in there and I'm bringing uh, these snowshoes because I'm going to need them where I'm going. Apparently it snowed a foot uh, overnight. So I'm going to bring my shoes. Now my buddy James is also bringing his shovel, but I'm going to bring my shovel uh, at least to the truck, to the trailhead. And at the last minute, we can decide if we both bring uh, a shovel or not. Same with, uh, no, I'm going to leave the axe there. He said he's bringing an axe. I know he is. And then uh, I need to make sure I have my saw. So I have my winter saw or my, my year round saw. And then I need two walking poles for winter and I need to make sure that I have the other one in the truck and I need to make sure I got my baskets. So I have a basket right here. Okay, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but uh, we'll figure it out. Look at what I got for Christmas. I got a nice folding chair, uh, the Helinox. I'm gonna throw it in a bag, but I think where we're going, there's plenty of chairs, so I might not bring it. When I say chairs, it's a fairly well-established campground, so there'll be cooking areas and, and uh, there should be benches, but I might just bring it just to test it out. Um, in terms of things that I normally bring in summer, one thing I definitely do not need is my water filter because that would just freeze. And as soon as I reached over here, I realized that for winter, I prefer bringing a Nalgene because I can put more water. It's easier to pour water from a pot that because we're, we tend to melt snow to make water. So this is convenient. This is heat resistance. I can fill it with hot water at night and have heat. So I'm going to put that in my pack. And so my smart water bottle is done for the year. Uh, in terms of other uh, sundries, um, I have my toothbrush, but for Christmas, my wife got me a new toothbrush. So I'm going to use that. This one can go in the garbage. And then uh, no change to my cup, but as I see my cook set is not big enough for melting snow. So in winter, I like to bring a larger pot so I can melt snow conveniently. And I'm gonna see what's in here that I also might need. So my pocket knife, I'm gonna throw that in there. A lighter, uh, throw that in there, but I'm not bringing fuel uh, and I'm not bringing well I am bringing fuel but I'm not bringing uh, a butane cartridge because it's too cold I'll just keep my scrubby so I'm gonna bring my um, MSR whisper light which is right here so my MSR whisper light I'm sure I'm a bit far from the image but so the MSR whisper light is the whisper light, the pump, 
and uh, a pot gripper and a repair kit for the whisper light so seals and putty for the pump and things like that and it fits in here so kind of the equivalent of what I have there in fact I have a pouch for that I'm going to find that pouch I'm going to use this pouch and then that becomes my cook set pouch all right uh, mattress inflatable mattress but that's not enough in winter so I'm going to use also a closed cell foam underneath repair kit uh, pillow toilet paper and then I make sure I got my tent I'm just bringing a, a, a three season tent and a three season tent with uh, titanium pegs so the beauty of titanium pegs is I can drive them into the ice and uh, they'll be fine. The plate, because James is cooking. My puffy. I have some other winter gear that I'll show in a second. Uh, first aid kit. And then I need a sleeping bag. Okay, so for a sleeping bag, I'm going to bring my... Outdoor Vitals, uh, minus 30 um, Celsius, which is uh, extremely warm. This is actually, I don't remember what this is in Fahrenheit, so I'll tell you in Fahrenheit in a second. I think in Fahrenheit, it's minus 15 Fahrenheit, which of course is the um, uh, lower comfort rating, so it's probably a minus 10 Fahrenheit, but... Um, I'll be, uh, well, I know I'll be uh, fine on this. I mean, you've seen a video last year at uh, Lake Margaret. I slept in this thing when it was minus 30 and I was super comfortable. And then I always leave my bags hanging like that when they're not in use. They stay nice and lofted. And then I'm just gonna stuff it in a uh, aftermarket stuff sack. thing is quite big and bulky so a good compression bag is very very helpful and Good enough. Just want to highlight something. I'm not bringing a bear spray, but I need other stuff in winter that's in this bin. So I just go through the bin and it'll jog my memory. I'm going to bring um, these um, North Face um, booties. They're great for around camp at night. These are insulated socks, or sorry, down socks. So I'm going to throw those in there. Gives me a huge. Uh, uh, comfort when sleeping at night waterproof socks I'll explain that on the trail and I'm not gonna bring my gaiters I'm gonna bring puffy pants again for around camp mostly or to sleep in and looking at this you know do I need a do I need I'm not going far and long enough to justify how am I bring these socks should be upstairs. Uh, gloves, balaclavas, this should be upstairs. Down gloves can be important. I'm just gonna leave them out for now. Okay, good. You know, that was kind of quick, but that's what happened. I, I've been doing this for so long. I, I have the lists in my head of what I need. But um, I will come back downstairs now, later. I'm going to go upstairs and pack uh, organized food, a little bit of food and clothing. And then 
and then I'm gonna start packing it. And then when I'm actually packing it, at that point, I do have a checklist, and then I'll go through the check, actually the checklist is hanging here. I have a checklist hanging up there. This one's from Outdoor Vitals. Uh, you can get, you know, if you order gear from them, you get a checklist, but you can also um, create your own checklist, which I've done over time, you know. If I go through the checklist right now, headlamp is upstairs, batteries for the cameras, the cameras, you know, do I need sunscreen? No, GPS, no. Um, so a couple of things in there that, that I still need to add, but I got the basics right here downstairs and then I'll put it all together. And then because I always pack exactly the same way, that's also a good reminder. So, you know, when I put the bag in the bottom of my, when I put the sleeping bag in the bottom, for instance, that's where I also stuff the saw. So if I, and my fire starters, ha, huh, bingo. Just thinking like that, I just realized I don't have fire starters. So give me two seconds. I'm gonna turn around and grab some fire starters. So I have a box of fire starters downstairs. So I'm gonna throw four or five of them just on the pile here. And now I thought about it. So, you know, but back, back to what I was saying, um, I pack the same way all the time. So as I'm packing, it reminds me of things. So in the bottom of my bag, there's a special compartment. Sleeping bag goes there, saw, fire starters, cook set. Okay, so if I'm packing, I'll immediately be reminded of the cook set. Then I move up, you know, uh, tent, um, thermarest, closed cell foam, and you know, so as I'm loading, I'm jogging my memory because I always, it's muscle memory, it's, it's other memories that remind me. All right, let me go finish. Because I'm hiking in winter, I prefer to bring my liquid stove, so I need uh, some naphtha. Uh, that's not enough. Maybe I should just bring big bottle. Yeah. That's empty. Camp fuel. Yeah, I have an old video from several years ago that explains the advantages of uh, liquid fuels in winter. Basically, uh, this goes in my this fuel will be bottle will be connected to my MSR Whisper Light. And the advantage of the whisper light is that I pump uh, and that forces the fuel out of there. And then there's a coil through the whisper light that uh, once I preheat it, the fuel going through that coil warms itself up and uh, vaporizes and that's how you get. So, and, and the other advantage of liquid fuel is it just has such a higher heat content. So I get more mileage out of it. And it's cheap. This is, you know, 12 bucks for a, for a jug of, will I be able to put that lid back on? I don't know. just transfer from the bigger bottle because I don't want to run out of fuel in winter that's that's a big problem bingo right to the top make sure this o-ring is not cracked this leaking in the pack is no fun we go all right so this is going to be sort of a quick recap as I pack my pack um, and like I said I always pack the same way which acts as a way to jog my memory so my sleeping bag is in a compression sack I don't know if people are even familiar with compression sacks but a compression sack is just a big stuff sack that has these straps on the side and it allows you to forcefully squeeze the bag so now um, the, the, and like I said, look how easy it is to put stuff in this big giant bag. You know, imagine that you're doing this in, outside when it's minus 20 and your hands are cold. So you, you don't have to be, you know, fine dexterity. 
So in the bottom goes my sleeping bag, my saw goes in the bottom for me, and then some fire starters. And that's that's the memory jog. So uh, I'm ex I'm always expecting those those things in the bottom like that. Um, moving over, so I'm bringing the Nalgene. Nalgene goes on the side like that. And then on this pack, I got this big um, uh, bulge po outside pocket kind of thing. So in the outside pocket is the tent. I made sure the tent was all good and the uh, tent pegs and the poles are in there. And then I have, as a habit, my Thermarest goes right in there as well, my mattress. And then just a foam pad. So if I'm sitting on snow, you know, we can make benches out of snow. And at least I got a pad to sit on so I'm not getting my butt wet. So that goes in there. And then um, the other thing I can stuff in sort of, actually in the outside pocket is the fuel. So if there's spillage, it's, uh, it's spilling on things that are less critical. So then that leaves me my big middle pocket. And in the big middle pocket, so I have clothes, so I, you know, you saw earlier, socks, extra t-shirt, things like that. Uh, down socks, puffy jacket, and these um, puffy pants. So that goes, I'm doing things very quickly and just in the essence of, so that goes there in the big main compartment. And then I'm gonna stuff down at the bottom my pot my pot grabber and my MS, my my liquid fuel stove. So that goes there. So now, um, basically it's just a few little things after that. My food bag, which is heavy and dense, will go right in the middle of my back. So that'll go in uh, last. My, my, um, my booties, pair of down gloves, now on top here, I have, um, I'll have food for the day. I have an extra pair of gloves other than the ones I'll be wearing. Food each day or lunch goes on top. Toilet paper, feet warmers, and then my uh, sundry bag. So this is a uh, lighter miscellaneous rope, toothbrush, toothpaste, an extra bottle, uh, little accessories goes in there. And then my Outdoor Vitals inflatable pillow. The gaiters and the boots go with me. And actually, as I was packing, I just realized something. In this little bag will be a fork and a spoon. So that goes in there. Just a habit for me. The cup gets snapped on the outside. Hi, my girl, Tika. And lastly, I'm going to put um, this closed cell foam can go strapped to the bottom I just notice one last thing that should have been in there my trusted pot gripper because we're picking we're melting a lot of snow and and uh, using the fire campfire and that's it so the only thing I need to put in there now before leaving is my food bag, which is upstairs, my cameras, my batteries, uh, my headlamp, they're all on my desk upstairs. I'll pack my gaiters with me and my boots, and there you go. So there's my, there's my winter load. It's actually not that heavy. By the time I'm done, it'll probably be about 40 pounds, you know. Winter gear is bulkier and there's more of it and it's heavier than summer. So whereas an all-in three-day trip in the summer might be about 24 pounds, this will be closer to 40 pounds. All right, hope you enjoyed that. That's uh, transitioning from my summer setup to my winter setup. And then uh, now I'm just going to go hike. So uh, part two of this uh, series is my hike up to Lake O'Hara.